What is up guys, Kevin here with Turn 5 Fabrication. Had a Black Friday special going on at our shop. It's still going on, turn5fabrication.com. Uh, but during Black Friday sales, we also bought some things for the shop. One of the things that I bought was the Bentec software from bentec.com, I think. And uh, bought their whole software package, all the stuff for exhaust, for headers, for roll cages. Came with a bunch of different templates and stuff, but I want to give it a, a Tesco uh, for bending a main hoop on the CRX that you see behind me. We're doing a half cage on it. I spent a good part of yesterday afternoon going through the different material sizes that I have, running them through every die that I have, and just putting together the specification list for the dies and my bender. I think that this is going to help a lot with a lot of waste, a lot of trial and error. From what I could tell, just tinkering with it, it's super great. Alright, let's test it out. We've got the Bentec software open. If we click on template here, uh, you can select things with one bend, two bends, three bends, four bends, and so on and so forth. We're going to do this double bevel hoop for our design. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the outside measurements here. That's just going to measure outside to outside of our tube. So I'm going to go ahead and just close this one out. I've already got it pulled up how I want it. We've got our die size and our material size, inch and a half, 95 wall DOM with a six inch radius die for inch and a half tubing. So on here, what we're going to do is we're going to type in all of our specifications. This is going to be our outside, the outside up here by essentially where a window is on the vehicle, our outside, the outside on the base, our overall height, and then the height between the uh, between the segments here, between A1 and A2. 52. Thirty-seven and a half here for the top. Our height here is twelve and a half. And our overall height of this is thirty-three. Our overall bottom measurement is forty-seven. And if you'll pan right there, you'll see that it brings up our main hoop. I have the material saved in here that shows me the cost of the material. Uh, let me go ahead and pull that up. First, we'll go to we can look at our bend order. We'll press play on that. You'll see how it actually bends each segment of the main hoop. That's just something cool to make sure you don't run into issues when you have complex bends. Go over here to tasks. The price of this material, uh, we're going to start with a 102 inch piece, uh, 102.65 inches, and the cost of this piece is going to be $50.04. We can go to our flat layout. This is going to show us, uh, let me see here, the start of each bend and the end of each bend. We can also see the center of the bend, but we just want to look at the start of the bend and we also want to look at the angles of which we're going to bend. Okay, so now we're going to take our piece and we're going to mark our measurements at the specified points. Get our tube in here close to the first mark. And this is our indexer. And what this does is does not allow any rotation to happen on our pieces while we're bending them. We are going to go to folder, new program. We're going to select our material, inch and a half, six inch radius die. Our wall thickness is 095. Turn the speed up, turn auto return on. And then we're going to go ahead and do our measurements that the machine tells us to do. Which the first one was 37. Set that. We're going to set our back spring. We have 3 degrees of back spring. Go to our next bend. It's going to be 60 degrees. Back spring again. 3 or you could just type in 63. Either one. Another 60 degree bend. Back spring of 3. And our last bend here is going to be 37 again. We'll go ahead and save this, 
CRX main hoop go back to spot number one and we are ready to bend Now we go to our next spot here. And different machines, you line up the die, uh, or the line on your tubing with different areas. There's a line here on the die. I found it's much easier to go here. So when I programmed all of the settings into the computer, this is the area that I went based off of. We're at our third bend. For good measure, sometimes it's always good to make sure that you are still level down here as the material just kind of has a sag to it from sitting in the machine. So we'll just kind of hold some weight up with our hand. There's really not much there to account for. And we'll go to our last and final bend, which is gonna be another 37 degree bend. Just to double check some things here, I just want to make sure that this did come out to the correct height. 33 inches there, and we are 33 inches here. Okay, now we'll go fit it to the car and see how it fits. And now that we're back in the car, you can see we'll center this up. I gave a little bit of extra play up top here. It could have been, I don't know, maybe a half inch wider. Um, but where our ends are here on the sides and where it comes down to the middle, this is going to give us room that we need to actually pull this hoop out of the car to take it to powder coat once it's all welded and finished out. Uh, you can see our spots here on the base line up perfect where I needed them to. Like I said, our top could have been just a hair wider, um, but it's no, no big deal there. I am just so mind blown of how good the software was with entering in the measurements of area that I had to work with and how the tube turned out to fitting with the main hoop exactly what I wanted. Granted, I could have gone a half inch wider on the top. That's a lesson learned for the future. But for my first time ever using the software and seeing what it's capable of and the accuracy of it, I am super pleased and i just shocked that I didn't have this software for all the years that I've had this shop. I've been in business now for almost five years and I probably have wasted fives of tens of thousands of dollars of material of just bending up parts wrong, cutting drops this this far, this far, even this long off of a, off of a main hoop to get the right dimensions that I wanted. And all that stuff is just sitting in the scrapyard now uh, for pennies on the dollar what I paid for it. So I definitely recommend the software to anybody else. If I could do that with just one night of tinkering with the laptop and going to a car immediately and making a usable part the first time, I think it's paid for itself already.